Hey guys, welcome back to another video by Simply Learn. In this video, we will be learning all about JavaScript arrays and the popular methods of the array object. So without further ado, let's get started. So what's in it for you? We'll start by understanding what a JavaScript array is. Then we will get to know about the operations that we are performing on the array. After that, we'll get familiar with some of the most used array methods. And lastly, we'll go through map, reduce and filter functions. So what exactly is an array? Now an array object lets you store multiple values in a single variable. It stores a fixed size sequential collection of elements of the same type. Now an array is used to store a collection of data and it uses only integers as element indices. However, associative arrays can also use string indices. Moving on, let's understand what array operations are. Now we can perform various operations on an array in JavaScript. But let's start by creating an array. So for that, let's go ahead and create a folder first, which will consist of the file that we're creating, right? So for that, let me just uh, go ahead and create a folder. And I'll call it demo underscore array. So once you're done with that, open your Visual Studio Code Editor. And here, say open folder. And click on demo array. Okay, it's creating the workbench. All right, and now here you can see the new file icon. So go ahead and create demo.html file. All right, here you go. Now let's start typing the code. The first thing we do is type in our HTML tag. And here I have the head tag. And let me say JavaScript tutorial. All right. And now let's create the body tag. Now within the body tag, I create a paragraph tag and create an ID and let me call it demo. And then close the tag. Now I'll explain to you why we're doing this a little later. So first, let's go ahead and create the script tag. So say script and within the script, let's create our array. So let me use the keyword let and say we give the name of the array cars equals in square base braces. We say BMW and uh, Volvo and then say Honda. All right. So now we create an array. Now, one more thing is that we use the keyword let so that which indicates that the array can be changed throughout the program. All right. So now we go ahead and display it. So I say document dot get element by ID. And here I say now the ID created was demo. So I say demo here. And I use the dot inner HTML property which is equal to cars. Okay, let me change this to BMW first. All right, so what exactly inner HTML does is that it is responsible for what is being displayed on the web page. Okay, now since we've taken ID as demo, any changes made is reflected in this ID and then displayed onto the web browser. All right, so let's save this and now execute the file. So here I go back to my uh, folder and then to the file and go ahead and click on it. So there you go. The heading is displayed and the entire array is displayed here. All right, so let's go back to our VS Code. Okay, so I hope this was easy to understand. Now let's go ahead. So the next operation is to access an array element. So let's go back to our VS code and here let's create another variable say let 
BMW. BMW is a name of a variable. Don't get confused with the array element. So BMW equals cars of the index 0. So basically, cars of 0 is nothing but BMW. Alright, so that is being saved in the variable BMW. And now let's just go ahead and display this. So we, let's just copy this. And paste it here. And instead of cars, you use the variable name BMW. That is this one. Alright. So now let's save this. And when we execute it, you see BMW here. That's how you retrieve an element from an array. Next up, we have the array length property, which displays the length of the array. So again, let me show you how to do that. Let's go back to our code. And here, let's create a variable and let's call it length variable. So I say let len equals cars dot length. Now you can use the length property which will retrieve the length of the array for us. It's as simple as that. And now after this, again, let's just copy the same code here and then let's pass len. Okay. Now let's save this. And when you execute it again, it says 3. So we've successfully retrieved the length of the array. Alright, so the next operation is to access the last array element, right? So let's go back to our VS code and now let's create another variable and let's call it last and we'll just say last equals cars and within square braces cars dot length minus 1, right? So basically, the length of the array is 3 and 3 minus 1 is 2. So it should retrieve cars of 2 which is Honda, right? So let's just execute this. Let me pass last here. Save it and see if it displays Honda for us. There you go. It's as simple as that. Alright, so moving on. The next array operation is loop over an array item. So for that, let's go to our code and here, let's use the for loop. So I say cars dot for each, for each and within this, we'll say item comma index comma array and now we use the arrow function and display the content on the console. So I say console dot log of item along with its index. So let's save this and now let's go ahead and execute it. Alright, now as you can see nothing is printed on your web page, right? Because whatever is being printed has to be printed in your console. So now click on F12 which opens the developer options and here you can see console. So click on that and now you can see the name of the item in the array along with its index. So you see BMW 0, Volvo 1 and Honda 2. Alright, so moving on. Now that we've learned about the array operations, let's go ahead and learn about the array methods. So the first method is toString. Now as the name suggests, it is used to convert an array into a string. Alright, so let's go back to our VS code. And now, Let's copy the same code here and here instead of last I just say cars dot to string. Now you can use this method 
to convert the array into a string. So let's save this and let's execute it. All right. Now here the same output is shown, which means that the type has only been changed to string type. All right, moving on. The next method is pop. Now pop basically removes the last element from the array. So let me show you how that works. Let's go back to our VS code and here we have to save the popped element into a variable, right? So let's create a variable, say last. Okay. And oh, since last is already used, let me call it last one. Last one of cars.pop. And we can use the pop method to pop the element. And now we can just copy the same code to display this onto our web page. And here I just say last one. Now, since we've popped the last element, the array has only two elements, right? That is BMW and Volvo. So if you want to display the last element, it should display Volvo, right? So what we can do is we can just create another variable, say last two, and just use the same logic here. Okay, and now let's just display it on our console and let's say last two. All right, so now let's save it. Now the popped element has been saved in last one, which is displayed on the web page. And the last element of the array after the pop function has to be displayed on our console. So let's go ahead and execute the file. All right, so Honda has been displayed. That is the element that has been removed from the array. And now once we check our console, here you go. Here you can see Volvo, which means that is the last element in the array. Moving on, the next method is the push method. Now, as the name suggests, it is used to add a new element to the array. And remember, to the end of the array. So let's go back to our VS code. And here, let me say cars dot push. Push is the method that we are using. Inside of which we'll say Audi. All right. And now let's just display the same thing. So let me copy this. And here, let me say cars. Okay, so let me save it. And once I execute it, it says BMW, Volvo and Audi. So we've successfully added another element to the end of the array. So the next method is the shift method. Now basically shift is used to remove the first element from the array. Now this method shifts all the elements, reducing the indices of every element by one. All right, let me show you how this works. So let's go back to our VS code. And here, let me just say cars dot shift. It's as simple as that. And let's just display this. Let me copy the same thing. Let's save it. And when we execute it, here you can see it just displays Volvo and Audi. So now cars has array elements Volvo and Audi with array indices 0 and 1. All right, so moving on, the next method is unshift. All right, so to add an element into the beginning of an array, we use the unshift method. Therefore, this method increases the array index by one, right? So let's go back to our VS code and use the same function unshift. So I say cars.unshift and here we go, let's save it. And here we have to specify what we're adding, right? Let me say Hyundai. Okay, let's save this. And when we execute it, you can see Hyundai, Volvo and Audi. It's as simple as that. All right, moving on, the next method is the concat method. Now this is basically used to merge two different areas. Right, so let's go back to our VS code. 
and here let's create another array first and let's just call the array bikes okay and let's create say yamaha and let's say suzuki and then we'll say royal enfield okay and now let's save this and say let vehicles this is another array which is basically the after concatenation the con entire array is saved into this array all right so let's say cars dot concat of bikes we just concat bikes and cars together okay and then let's just display this over the web page so let me change this to vehicles all right let me save this so let's go ahead and execute it there you go now both the arrays have been merged together into a single array so the next array method is the sort method now basically sort is used to sort the entire array into ascending order all right so let's go back to our editor and here let's just use the sort method on the array vehicles all right vehicles dot sort okay and let's just display this on our web page so again let's go back and execute it and here you can see it has been sorted the next method is the reverse method so the reverse method is again used to reverse the elements in an array so it's logic right so sort was used to sort it in ascending order now when you reverse it it just sorts it in the descending order so let's go back here i want to copy the same thing all right and here instead of sort let me just say reverse so let's save this and execute it there we go it has displayed the entire array in the reverse order all right with that we finish the array methods next up we have map reduce and filter first up we have array dot map now the map method is used for creating a new array from an existing one by applying a function to each and every one of the elements in the first array and it does not change the original array all right so to make you understand this better let's go back to our visual studio code and now here let's first create another array okay so let me call this num1 and let's have integers let's say 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 7 okay and now let's have another array num2 so let's go ahead and say num1 dot map of let me define a function say multiply okay so multiply is the function that is that i'm going to define here so let's say function multiply of value okay and inside this let me say return value into 2 okay so what this basically does is that it multiplies each and every element of the array num1 by 2 and saves the new elements into the array num2 okay now after this let's go ahead and display the contents so let me copy this and let's display the content 
in the array num2 right let me save it let's go back here execute it so there we go every element has been multiplied by 2 and then displayed again i hope this was clear for you now the next method is the filter method so the filter method takes each element in an array and applies a conditional statement against it. And if this condition returns true, the element gets pushed onto the output array. But if it returns false, the element does not get pushed. Alright, so let me show it to you. Now, let's go ahead and create another variable, say num3. And here I say num1 dot filter of say comp. Now comp is a function. Let me define the function here. Let me say function comp of value takes a value as a parameter within which I'm going to check if the value is greater than 4. Now it only appends the element into the array num3 if the value is greater than 4. Alright. So now let me just go ahead and change this to num3. Alright. Let's save this. And let me go back and execute. Here we go. Now the values, so let's go back here, let me check. Now num1 had the values 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, right? So according to this, it has to only display 5, 6 and 7. Do not get confused with num2 here. We've passed num1 here, so it checks for this array, right? So according to the logic, it should display 5, 6 and 7 and it has done so here. Okay. Moving on, the next method is the reduce method. Now the reduce method reduces an array of values down to just one single value. Now to get the output value, it runs a reducer function to each element of that array. Okay, now this method does not reduce the original array again. So let's go back to our VS code. Now let me create another variable say num4 and say num1.reduce and let me call it sum. So what we're basically doing is that we're adding all the digits 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 in num1 to a single value, right? That is the sum and then we're going to be displaying that. So what we're going to do is let's define the function here. Function sum Basically, is total comma value, right? And then here, let's say return total plus the value. Okay. And after this, I'm going to display the content. So let's say num4. Okay. Let's save it, go back, and execute. Here we go. It displays the sum of the entire values in the array. This was pretty simple, right? Alright, so this was a simple demo on JavaScript arrays. I really hope this helped you. If you have any doubts, let us know in the comment section below. We're also going to be coming up with more and more JavaScript videos, so watch out for that. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.